Hello, I'm Juliana Crowder, founder of A Girl and a Gun, coming to you from the Girl and a Gun headquarters just outside of Austin, Texas. I wanted to talk briefly about uh, use of force and when you should use it. It is a, a very common question that comes up um, in training sessions, chat groups that we have with Girl and a Gun. And so I wanted to share with you what I learned as a student and what I pass on as an instructor to those that take my class. So what I have found um, in teaching use of force and penal code laws in the state of Texas is that there is a very fine line on use of force and deadly force um, that pertains to defense of person or property. If you read the penal codes of your state, I'm sure you'll see that they are clear as mud, meaning they're written to be gray because there's not really a way you can live with inside the boundaries perfectly, the penal codes are there just to judge you by your actions afterwards. So when we ask the question, how will I know when it's time to use deadly force and you find yourself in that moment of truth, believe me, you will know. I have four points that uh, I learned when I took a class from Tom Givens at Rangemaster, and I'm going to share those, those moments of truth with you right now. So, point number one is ability. Aggressor must have the means of causing you death or serious bodily injury, must have a weapon capable of such damage, and must be within useful range to use that weapon. So we normally say 21 feet is your bubble of safety. So if someone is within 21 feet of being able to reach you, touch you, grab you, your bubble of safety is in danger. So that is ability. Intent. Aggressor must show that he intends to cause you death or serious bodily injury. This can be stated or implied. So someone has the ability to hurt you and they're saying they are going to use a weapon against you or maybe they are bigger than you and put hands on your throat. That is your, your um, probable cause of what their intent is. Imminent jeopardy. Under the circumstances as they exist, you must reasonably believe that your life is in grave and immediate danger, which means goes well and it goes right into preclusion that under the circumstances you have no acceptable alternative other than to use deadly force to save your life. So imminent jeopardy and preclusion are if you don't change something, meaning you can't exit safely where you are, there, there's no way to get out of it. You can't back away. You can't use your words. There is nobody to help you. If you do not change your situation, you will be seriously injured or potentially dead. So if you find yourself in a room backed against a wall with only one way in and one way out and some very big scary person in between you and that exit, you can go through. They have the ability to hurt you. They have the intent because they're saying so or their body language implies it. You're in eminent jeopardy and you make the conclusion that if you don't do something, you will die. That's just an example of how you can use these four points to decide when use of deadly force is necessary. So when you're out and about and the little hairs on the back of your neck start standing up and you might feel like you're in danger or you get into a situation of conflict and you wonder, is it time? Do I need to pull a weapon, whether it be a gun, a knife, a taser, anything to save yourself? These four little bullet points will pop through your head. Does the person have the ability to hurt or kill you? Do they have the intent? Is imminent jeopardy happening? And have you made the preclusion that you have no other choices? I hope this opens up some discussion for you. And if you have questions, I'm always happy to talk about it. Um, these are just some of the things that we find important at Girl in a Gun, not only to be safe and responsible gun owners, to have fun recreationally with our firearms, but also to know the importance of self-defense and the laws that go along with it.